Next up, we have Tamara Bakst, CEO and co-founder of Visic Technologies, speaking about GAN for EV powertrain, breakthrough and challenges. Dr. Tamara Bakst is one of the pioneers of GAN transistors design and development, covering wide power and frequency ranges. She started to work on GAN Hemp in Galal, MMIC, part of the Israeli aircraft industry. In 2010, Tamara co-founded Visic Technologies with 3.5 Semiconductor Technology expert Gregor, Gregory Boonen, and she has been leading the company ever since. In this plenary, Dr. Box will present a three-phase GAN-based inverter reference design with 400 volt bus voltage and 400 amps RMS current. She will analyze the major steps on the way from the semiconductor chip design through module development and a full current inverter operation. She'll describe for us the main challenges. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Baxt to the stage. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here and to share with you our uh, result in gallium nitrate for EV power inverters. And this is a work of a large team, as you can see, encompassing semiconductors, packaging, power electronics, inverter design areas, and this had been done in VisIC. And uh, we, we are going to, here we are. Uh, to go through why gallium nitrate is required for inverters. What are main challenges in inverter operation from transistor and system point of view, our practical solutions and some results, and the summary and what's come next. But before we are jumping into details and to make our conversation more grounded, I want to ask in a general, is GAN for passenger cars inverter possible in principle? And the answer is yes. And it had been tested at the European customer site with motor based on this die. Four of these eight milliohm dies had been combined into demonstration vehicle module, resulting in two milliohm platform, which had been in turn combined into three-phase inverter on this IC side and on customer side, we connected it to to dyno system and measured these beautiful sine waves. Three phase, 400 volt, 500 amp peak gallium nitrate inverter possible. So how we did it? And before we are going there, let's set up a few definitions important for us. First is a driving cycle. Essentially, driving cycle is a set of conditions which car experiences during driving, uphill, downhill, braking, and so on. And the WLTC standard, which is part of WLTP, is a 30 minutes test, which compresses the all driving cycle and represents a base for standard measurement of fuel consumption, pollution, and most important for us, EV car efficiency. So when we are talking about efficiency, it doesn't make sense to talk about peak efficiency, it makes sense talk about efficiency over WLTC cycle. And how car makers are looking on efficiency. You can see efficiency is measured as a function of motor speed in RPM, that's revolving per minute, you can see when you are driving. And the torque, essentially a force that car needs to push forward. And torque is roughly proportional to current of transistor, and motor speed is proportional to voltage of transistor. Efficiency here are contours. You can imagine it as a mountain going up. And as you can see that maximum efficiency is mostly in a maximum power where the high power dissipation. It could be different designs. This one is for Volkswagen. Another one I'm presenting here is for different cars. So you can see that a topology of this mountain may change, but efficiency is always where high power is because inverters are designed for high power, 150, 200 kilowatt. And the number to take away from this slide is requirement of 300 amp, 500 amp of current. However, this peak power doesn't make much use because most of time we are driving in very low load conditions. Just remember, we are driving around 2000 RPM 
and well below 50% of maximal torque. And in this area, efficiency is ranged between 75 to 90%, so it's a plenty of room for improvement. To improve efficiency, if you want to improve efficiency of inverter, we need to work in this direction, to improve efficiency in a low load condition. And to improve efficiency here, we need to understand where losses are coming from. In this case, low load, low current, low conduction losses, because it's I square multi multiplied by RDS on, and switching losses are dominant. So we need to look for low switching losses technology, and these are wideband gap uh, electronics, like Tesla did in 2018 when they replaced silicon by silicon carbide in Model S and gave 4% of efficiency and about 10% of a driving distance. Switching losses are hard calculated. Analytically, they are typically measured. And this actual test data, you can see comparison between silicon, silicon carbide, and gallium nitrate on a system on one side and on device level on other side, on the left side of this slide. And you can see that in both cases, system side had been tested by tier one, by our customers, device side we measured for single device per switching cycle, measured in same conditions of current and voltage. In all cases, gallium nitrate have significant advantage over both silicon and silicon carbide devices. And these are two levels. Single device obviously provide much more efficiency upside. A system uh, has different losses into the system, but still it is 20% improvement over silicon carbide, 70% improvement over silicon. And I want to stress here that advantage of gallium nitrate is coming from low load conditions. When current is low, advantage of gallium nitrate, as you can see on this plot, when we have comparison between the gallium nitrate and silicon carbide, is much more pronounced. So gallium nitrate is good for inverter, good for efficiency, because in this case, we can make a car uh, lower cost, shrink battery. We can make car with longer driving range. That's a trade-off, obviously. And in both cases, it will be improved thermal management because improved efficiency means lower power dissipation. So we are talking here about either 10% of smaller battery or 10 to 20% longer driving range of a car. All is nice and perfect. Now we understand gallium nitrate is good. Let's how to do inverter. And for inverter, let's look how powertrain looks at device, what is required. Requirements are reliability by automotive standard. It is the most important thing. Second one, devices must be manufacturable in a high volume and high uniformity with high die area, because we want high current. We do not want to parallel dozen of devices. And important as well for automotive industry, ability to scale up fast if required. Low switching losses per given RDS on, that we already understood. High threshold voltage, because in high current conditions, voltage spikes on gate are inevitable. And the last, easily paralleled, because to make one die 300 up or 500 amps is simply unpractical and probably not possible. So there are a number of different variety of technologies in gallium nitrate, so we need to pick up right technology. And uh, how professor who taught me physics had been saying to make a stew from a rabbit, we need to have at, we need to have at least a cat. No offense for cat lovers here. And uh, let's look on all varieties of gallium nitrate and choose our transistor. Uh, I'll start from the most popular today, uh, JFET or P-gate hand, uh, which had been probably pioneered by EPC and uh, done commercially in the high scale Infineon, TSMC, Panasonic, InnoScience, and today number of Chinese factories uh, who are using it successfully for number of consumer applications in low power. Uh, and it also called, called as a normally off, 
or emod gallium nitrate. Next big section is a, uh, normally on or demod gallium nitrate, which is a mishamped metal insulator semiconductor high electron mobility transistor. And it's also divided to two sections, cascode of initially IR and after the transform Xperia lately, and direct drive, which is developed by Texas Instruments and Visa IC Technologies. When we need to choose between these versions for inverter, I stress, DMOD is an easy winner because DMOD is a proven reliable technology widely employed in high power conditions today in high power radars. We just know that it is possible theoretically and fundamentally. DMOD has fundamentally lower specific RDSON because it doesn't have a trade-off between electron concentration and a threshold voltage on the other side. So these parameters are decoupled. We can design device at the same time lower DSON and high threshold voltage. And the last one, it's fundamentally better reliability because of absence of doping induced defects in the gate vicinity, which is important. So once we choose a demo device, we need to make a choice between cascode and direct drive. And here also choice is easy because as you can see, cascode is driving gallium nitrate through silicon transistor. Thus adding switching losses of silicon transistor to each switching cycle. And we learned that switching losses are most important parameter if you want to improve inverter efficiency. So we are going with direct drive and in a couple of words, I want to give you understanding what does it mean direct drive. Direct drive of demo device. Demo device is a normally on device, means that it has a threshold negative. And if we have zero potential difference between gate and source, device is on, fully conducting. If we have minus 15 or 20, Potential difference, device is off. All automotive drivers have independent auxiliary power supply, plus 15, plus 20. If we connect this power supply to the source, we can use standard driver. When we submit 15 volt to gate, like in this case, as you can see, gate to source potential is zero, device is one. When we su supply zero, to gate, gain to source potential is minus 15, device is off, and the efficient threshold voltage here is plus seven volt, which is very good for inverter applications. That's off operation. Now we need to add safety, because if driver is not present, and this direct drive also using the second silicon transistor in serials, but major difference that once driver is present, Silicon transistor is always open. So it participates only as a shunt, very low milliohm, in our case, two milliohm resistor that flowing current and does not participate in switching. So all direct drive systems, it's pure gallium nitrate switching, which is very important. However, when driver is not present, it works exactly like a cascode, but not, it is not a classic cascode case. And once we, today we have technology, we have understanding why it is needed, and let's go to the circuitry to inverter itself. And we have a number of challenges here. First is inductive load switching, because inductive load put transistor in a very uncomfortable situation in terms of stress on transistor. Paralleling of transistors, we need to parallel number of guys synchronously. Parasitic signals and spikes control, which are existing, and we need to suppress them without prom, uh, damaging efficiency. And the slew rate control, because customers need slew rate control for this application. Let's start with inductive load switching. And this motor is a bad news for transistor, because motor is practically pure inductive load. And inductive load applied to transistor places its IV into this beautiful curves, as you can see, but transistor feels very uncomfortable. 
And the special JEDA group, a uh, big number of experts in semiconductors worked many years and even provide today guidelines which recommend or require, I'm not sure, uh, testing of gallium nitrate in these conditions. However, specific test conditions are required and needed to be developed. And that's what we did. I want to connect this curve to actual sine wave. Here you can see three phase. Uh, third phase is not really seen, it's a dark blue. Not my fault, but you can see here three phase. It's a sine wave of 130 hertz. And this sine wave is built from small pulses, each one with frequency of 300 kilohertz. And if we take now each pulse, one period, and plot it, current and voltage, on axis of current and voltage, so you will see what transistor feels during each of these switching. So it is 300,000 times per second. It going into these extremely uncomfortable conditions for transistor, which it has at the same time high voltage and high current. And uh, having this measurement technique in our hand, we had been able to uh, improve and optimize our transistor specifically versus this feature, because this is not so bad. It could be much worse in the earlier generation cases. And we built a screening system, because on present state of technology today, we are screening devices which are going for two inverter on a half bridge uh, multi-pulse test when we power a number of devices and with external heating of 125 degrees, 60 minutes, we can screen weak devices. And so we know that weak devices are not going to inverter. Alternative approach to test devices had been proposed by CPS group and it's not pure inductive switching, it's more kind of resonance uh, switching using external inductance and internal capacitance of transistor. At the same time, where the upside, it can test dynamic breakdown. And so in a very short time, in short pulse, one can understand which devices are suitable for inverter operation and which devices will fail in inverter operation. As you can see here, they made some tests and we have some these specific our devices had negligible degradation before saturation after 700,000 pulses. So that's about inductive switching. We are going to paralleling of multiple devices, which we must do to provide current. On other side, it must be done very carefully, carefully and in synchronous way to ensure that current is shared equally between transistors. Because if one transistor is getting more current, it will result in catastrophic failure of the whole system. And parallel devices, system of parallel devices is a challenge. First, it demands much higher driver current. Second, it introduces more parasitic loops inside of a board and Third, it has much higher gain value, absolute gain. And so transistor is prone to oscillation. In driver case, if we had today strong driver with high current, most of our problems will be solved much easily. We don't. There is no such driver on the market. I hope it will be. As of today, there are two approaches that we are using. One is master and a few boosters, which we used for to parallel six devices with one driver. Here you can see this approach. And this had been verified by thermal measurements quite successfully. So it's really very uh, little of thermal disbalance between devices. Second approach, which we used for a larger power but less devices, only four devices in parallel, is Infineon uh, package driver, which has two 10 amp matched drivers in one package. Uh, and it works well. Next step is layout design. I will not take you through all steps. It's known in engineering how to do it. It's a lot of work. It's careful, 
design simulations, feedbacks, going to minimize power loops and increase current capability. Uh, as a result, for this board, we have, I think, quite a good inductance and reasonable capacitance. It should be improved, and it will be improved, obviously, but for now, it worked. And last one, how we know what differences into devices are tolerable. And this is a big advantage of direct drive design. Because on direct drive design, we can measure directly current on the Q2 inductance, on shunt inductance. And we can measure different devices, we can measure performance, and we can say what differences in threshold voltage are tolerable or RDS on. And in our case, we can say that, uh, let's say, bin of one volt, plus minus half, works perfectly well. And in our case, for technology we are using currently, it's more than 80% of total population, which is good, I think, for such a relatively early stage of gallium nitrate technology and such a large dye. Next one, and I need to speed up a bit, it is a parasitic signals and spike control by Miller clamp. And danger here is that gate current, here you can see on the low side transistor, so when high side is uh, on, beginning to be on, low side has a spike on a gate which can open a low side transistor and result in a shoot through current. Careful design and synchronization of Miller clamp is required. How to do it exactly, you can inquire a separate topic for 30 minutes at least with our engineers in a boost. Result you can see here. On a one way form, we can see six volt surge on a gate voltage. On the right side, there is a less than one volt of a gate spike. And what's important, high slew rate and thus efficiency had been unchanged. And last, and I think very important one and unique for gallium nitrate understanding, is suppression of oscillation in gun reverse conditions. Gallium nitrate, only one of all power transistors, doesn't have body diet. So we are using gallium nitrate for reverse conduction. It's very good. It's nice to have. However, it is a transistor, it's not a diode. And as a transistor, it has gain. And once we have gain, there is a danger of positive feedback in reverse conduction and oscillation. And as a result of a traditional Miller ratio of optimization, that CGS must be much larger than CGD, doesn't work in this case because transistor is reversed. What is working? must be optimized versus circuit the transistor scene. So this is a work that is done in close collaboration with designers of inverter. And this is specific case where gallium nitrate is unique comparing even to silicon carbide. And combining all of it, I am very happy to present you results of this work. You can see here inverter and tested data on closed loop dinoset. Uh, we had tested uh, up to steady field to 2000 RPM, mostly because of uh, control compatibility issues. But we can say here that we measured efficiency, we had very clean waveforms, and as you remember, we need to reach high efficiency and low load conditions. That's what had been reached. On 2400 RPM, 160 hertz of sine wave, we had above 99% of efficiency. That is what expected from gallium nitride. And uh, it's great to have it. So as a summary, and what's next here? What's next? More generations of gallium nitride, better, cheaper, more powerful, smaller modules. Not only demonstration vehicles, but real models like this one, transfer model, transfer molding models, 350 amps, and second generation of gallium nitrate, 
800 volt is just around the corner, and we have uh, seen advantages of gallium nitrate and three-level design, and we have few collaborations going on on three-level 800 volt inverters, which bottom line, I think that gallium nitrate can operate 400 volt passenger car inverter successfully. And it's a lot of work ahead of us, and not only ahead of our company, it's a lot of work ahead of all of us, of all engineering community, from side of power electronics, magnetics, design, control, drivers, inverter designs, before we are getting gallium nitrate into real cars on real road. But it will bring, I think, really good cars. Thank you for your attention. Really great job. Um, let people come to the microphones. I'm sure we're going to have some questions here. Nope, that was way Ada way. Chang with Ada. 8 o'clock. Ada. My quick question for you is since these are lateral GANs, can you comment on short circuit uh, capability? Oh, sure. Uh, it is uh, as wide band gap, it doesn't have avalanche, at least not in a reasonable range of application. And uh, the problem and challenge had been to build a short circuit protection which will be faster than the standing time of this specific transistor. We have, I think, application notes going on or published draft version, and uh, you can find uh, presentations about this uh, short circuit uh, protection. Uh, more you can meet in our booth. I think that uh, short, for short, short circuit capability, we are using also current sensing, let's say, differentiate of current sensing on a Q2. And because of very close proximity to actual gallium nitrate transistor, it allows us to make a very fast response. And after that, it's done very much like in silicon carbide in this two, two ways soft switching off of transistor. Hello, uh, Arijit Banerjee from University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Uh, I am curious about the cooling mechanism you used for the prototype, as well as going forward when you're thinking of uh, modules, what kind of cooling will be used? Thank you. First, it's a very good question. I can say about cooling that so if you look on parallel devices, it's important that cooling will go this way and not that way, so transistors will be cooled synchronously, so to speak, uh, and not to introduce imbalances. On other parts, I'm afraid much of cooling is proprietary information of our customers. Uh, they are responsible for cooling for this reference design very basic cooling had been done, so it's not for manufacturing purposes. You are welcome to visit our booth. We have their product engineer who, and our packaging, uh, VP of packaging, who will talk with you about all challenges of cooling. Because it's a huge topic. I think cooling of gallium nitrate, thermal management, could be done for a couple of hours workshop. Okay, good question. Is there a follow-up? Hello, this is Armin Avramian, Marquette University. Thank you for a great presentation. Um, with having the demand on the inverter side for EV and more electric aircrafts, do you see GAN modules uh, around the corner? Or, and then I saw that in your design, there were 500 of amps peak. So I was wondering how many GANs have you par paralleled in your, de in your design? Thank you. We paralleled four GANs in this design, and that's still first generation, so we think in second we can go with less. Uh, it will be higher opacity. Around the corner, it depends how you define the corner. Around the corner to design in, yes. It's possible to start design. We have this modest product, prototypes, hardware. Uh, mass production of cars with gallium nitrate 
or even planes, because it's a possibility. It will take time, because inverter is, uh, uh, has a high safety regulation. So it will take another five, six years to see mass product produced cars with gallium nitrate on the road. Okay, question over here. Hi, my name is Shankar from University of Sheffield. Thank you for a nice presentation. May I ask this question about the slew rate? You mentioned a slew rate of 10 amps per nanoseconds or whatever, but most motor drives for, are looking at below 10. 10 volts mm -hmm. per nanosecond or 10 amps per nanosecond, the way you look at it. So what kind of a gate resistor did you have to put in your circuit to achieve it? Uh, first, I should say that we never got below 10 amps per nanosecond requirements. Normally, they are tend a little bit too high up, between 10 to 30, around 20 plus minus. Some customers want to work with the new motors and talking about even 50, 60, 80 volts per nanosecond, which we will be happy to provide. Below 10, specific numbers, I, I, I think I will guide you to our application and customer support, which is also present in this conference. No worries. What, what's the gate resistance that you have used in your we had, uh, inverter? I don't remember numbers, and we had used number because we had uh, not only uh, between 10 to 50. So there are a variety of ranges depending on customer requirements. And here, let's say, on this slide, it is uh, 30 volt per nanosecond. And frankly, I don't remember the gate resistance. But come to our booth, you will get the answer, I promise. Sure, I will. Thank you. Thank you. And let's thank our speaker. We're running out of time Hello? here. But thank you. you have a last question? Sorry. Sorry, we've run out of time. But follow up with her at the booth. Let's thank Tamara.